G'day all, Graham Sanders here from Townsville, North Queensland. That's where Latitude 19 crosses the east coast of Australia. I'm doing a series every month throughout the year on the management of the local native bee species Tetragonula hocking's eye. This episode, well it's the 1st of December, so the monthly report is on temperatures, well Today is going to be about 38 degrees out this way. Minimum was only about 25. That's because we're right in the middle now of our hot, dry spell. No sign of the monsoon or what we call up here just simply the wet is about. But that's okay. This is part of what you do during these periods. I'm doing this at 6 o'clock in the morning because it's going to be so damn hot very shortly that I don't want to be out here for that. So we'll go through some of the hives out here. But before we do that, this is the local honeypot hive that you can see is just going like gangbusters. Uh, back we go just to show you the little blighter. Whoops. Or big blighter as the case may be. We'll come back to this hive in a minute. There you go. Anyway, what happens in the tropics, in the dry tropics in this time of the year is that the temperature is really hot but the humidity is low only between 40 and 50 percent and because of that the bees will do most of the activity very first thing in the morning as you can see here and you will see in this hive it is just going great now because it's only 40 50 percent humidity if your hives are even a little bit weak you don't open them up because bees like a humidity of around 80% in the hive. So basically, you don't want to open up a weak hive because you'll just sandblast the poor bastards, you will. And you may even kill a weak hive. So, we're not going to be opening up any hives for anybody who's expecting hives to be opened. So, what are we looking for in a good strong hive? Well, this one's a classic. You can see there's lots of good activity there, lots of guard bees about first thing in the morning at six o'clock, mind you. Hang on, I'll change hands so I get a bit more steadier. And if you look carefully, this is one of the hives where I had a swarm capture. And you can see that bees are still going back to the mother hive here on this hive and getting propolis and bringing it in. I saw a number of bees come in with propolis or beeswax, I might just call it native beeswax, from the mother hive. So I know that this hive is going strong. I also know this hive is going strong because I did have a look at it about a, two days ago and there's broods being developed in the hive. So I know this hive is definitely taken. It's A-OK, -okay. it's doing what it should be doing. No more to see here. Let's go and look at other hives. This is the hive that got the forehead fly attack. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, look up the series on my uh, YouTube page because during the month of this, uh, November, I had both a colonizing swarm come in over three days where I captured three swarms in three days and created three new hives. The honeypot hive you saw around the corner, I decided to strengthen that with one colonizing swarm, which you saw there. This hive got attacked by forehead flies, so bad it was infected, and I had to clean it up. Now, was I successful in cleaning up this hive? Well, I think just looking at the evidence in front of you tells you that that was a complete success. So this hive is now back at full strength. Why? What I did on this hive was two things. I put in extra pollen to allow them to build up the brood, but also extra brood, a small golf ball sized bit of brood in to help them combat the flies. And as you can see here now, this hive is just going gangbusters. Now in the management in the dry tropics, what you find is that the native hives exhaust their pollen stores. And I found all the hives that got attacked by forehead fly, they were down on pollen. 
well down on pollen. Now, what happens in December as the wet's coming is that all the trees are flowering now in anticipation of the wet. And so now there's plenty of pollen about and the bees are out restocking the hives. But there was a number of hives I had to give them a little pollen boost to get them through. And this hive was so weak because I had three attacking swarms that it had to give forward fly control, fixed that up. I mentioned I captured three swarms, I lost one. How did I lose one? Well, you can just see over there a board. Pause a sec. I captured a swarm. Over three days I got three swarms. I tried to capture one in a flower pot and on the third day I captured a third one in this flower pot. But I forgot how relentless the tropical sun is and this pot only copped half an hour of sun, a bit like this, in fact exactly like this um, hive here, very early morning low sun, and, and it's copping the sunshine. Well this pot copped the sunshine, didn't it? Just for half an hour, that was all, early morning. You can guess what happened? Yep, brilliant me, I killed that swarm. The bees and that, that pot got hot enough that it killed the swarm. So what's the lessons to learn? If you're going to use something thin-walled like a flower pot, keep it in constant shade. Better build your beehives out of thick timber and they can absorb the heat without damaging your bees. Let's move on. I mentioned thin walled hives. This is, a, this is a hive of my design that I've made out of nothing more than decking timber as you can see there. What's so special about this hive? This is the hive that I captured a swarm in. Now I was tempted to open it up so that you could see what progress is inside but with this low humidity I'm not willing to. The bees Oops, we'll just move it around here a sec and back. The bees have definitely sealed up this joint, this joint, and a little gap here and here. So they've actually sealed it up to maintain their 80% humidity. Because this hive is so young, it's only three weeks old, this hive. We'll go a bit closer again. Yeah, Whoop, where are we? Silly me, get down, that's it. Because this hive's only about three weeks old, I'm not willing to open it up to show you because I could kill the new brood. Why do I say new brood? Because like the honeypot hive around the corner, this hive and its workers are constantly going back. Oops, I'll stop that shaking. This hive is constantly going backward and forward to its parent hive. And I've seen propolis come in here as much as this morning. So they're still going forwards and backwards to the mother hive, raiding it. And propolis, the beeswax, if you like, is the most expensive thing. As I've told you before, eight times the amount of honey to make one load of propolis. So they will use that. If they're bringing in propolis, there's all beeswax, there's no other reason they're bringing it in than they're building brood cells. So I know this hive is okay. Finally, let's just check on a couple of strong hives and just see what's going on there. This hive was the hive that un got attacked by the colonizing swarms that we came in. And if you watch the videos on that, this got attacked really bad really bad. It also had a forward fly infestation, but I, what's the term, uh, gambled or took the punt that this hive was strong enough to repel forward flies. Well, I think the battle is still going on with this. There may be minor infestations because looky here and you'll, you may see one darting about. And that tells you that 
I've got to keep a close eye on this because there's still foreign flies about on this hive. Not on any other hives, they're fine, but on this hive. So there may be larva in this hive. In other words, a minor infection. There may be some maggots. And what the maggots are doing is giving off a scent, telling other forage flies that, hey, we're alive in here, you can put eggs in here. But the hive itself, it's slowly and steadily coming back. Oop, see if I can show you if any activity there. Not much activity, but enough activity. I've got bees going in and out. So it tells me that the hive is recovering nicely. The forward fly on the side means I've got to watch this hive and I may have to open it to do an inspection. So in the management, you're looking at the environment around is, and are there indications that you need to look at your bees? This one's a 50-50 at the moment because I've got bee activity on the outside, scenting up the hive. That's a, oops, get past that fishing line. There's a scent post where the bees sent up. But unfortunately, I've also got little forward flies running around still. So this is the one to watch for the next month. The others, they're just going like a house on fire. So there's your monthly report and what to look out for.